Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We are back another week. And man, was this, I mean, the main event from last week was just absolutely insane. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump right into it because you already know it's been, everything's been in shambles since then. Like everything's been in shambles. We might as well go ahead and start with the main event because... The main event is what everybody's talking about. Uh, let's shoot to you, CJ. Mm-hmm. What, what what did you think? I, I, I love the fight. So I've been on TikTok. And like I said, I don't ever argue with people on TikTok. So I tell people, hey, Islam won. Hey, man, Volk won. Islam lost. Volk lost. But guess who won? Us the people won. Us the people won because that was probably the highest level fight that I've seen in a very, 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 very long time. And shout out to both those dudes. And y'all know me. I'm a daggy hater (laughs) day one. But respect to those both those guys, man. I love the fight. I love the scrap. And I rewind. I'm going to tell y'all right now, man. If y'all would have seen how I was watching the fight, y'all be like, man, this dude's a wild man right now. I was giving (laughs) all my energy to both. I cussed out Islam from the floor to the roof. <laughs> I called him a whole bunch of words that I'm not going to say on this podcast. We just barely rolling, but yeah, it was. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly, man. Shout out to both of those guys. They put on the show. I loved it. Absolutely. But do you actually have an opinion on who, when you watched it, when it was over, before they said the decision, who did you think won? So in the fight, in the that day, yeah. that day right then, there, so my emotions were super high, but even though I hate Islam, I think Islam pulled it off closely, like a close fight. Watching it today, literally about two hours ago, I feel like it was way closer than a lot of people think it was. So because my emotions were heightened during that time, so I, I was calm re-watching it again. So I did a little, my little notes, I was like, you know, I thought both, uh, not both, I thought Islam won the first round. Close, back and forth. Second round, it was kind of split to me. They both had some moments going in in that round. I had third round, I had Volk winning that one. Fourth round, of course, Islam with three and a half minutes of control time. And then fifth round to Volk. So it could have been, it could have been either way. It, was, it To me, either could have been like a little draw or Islam slightly winning it, which he did. So, you know, shout out to both of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not mad at the decision. It's not a robbery, guys. Y'all can chill out and relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm I'm in the same sentiment. As I, I was watching the fight, and it went to the end, and it went all the way to the end, and before the judges called the fight, in my mind, I said, "Oh shit, this is about to be a a sp- uh, uh, a draw." I was in my head, it was a draw. We could watch, and nobody would have been upset with that. I guarantee you, nobody would have been upset if it was a draw because watching it, it was a draw, right? Because you had Islam. Oh, all right. So people, people was talking all this about Volkanovski, which I respect Volk, Volk because he actually went up in weight and made Islam seem like he was a human being because everyone was putting him on this pedestal, right? And we saw that, oh, Volk got takedown defense. Oh, he, he's able to get de- get up from a bad position on the ground or not get submitted or anything, right? So everybody's putting Islam on this pedestal for, like, this grappler and stuff. I was actually very impressed with his striking, right? Because you could see he was kind of on his back foot a little bit because Volk was kind of taking the lead. But Islam didn't strike very often. But when he did, he made it count. And I noticed that I was see and and even Volk would show it. He would like nod his head, like how Max would do, like okay, yeah, you landed there, like good shot. But he was doing that. He did that like four or five times in the match. You know what I mean? So dropped him yes. three, four times. So I was like, I, after seeing that, that's what kind of made it a split, a uh, uh, a draw in my opinion, because they both had very good highlights in the fight, and they they both didn't do anything wrong if that makes sense like they both did what exactly what we expected them to do and they both showed their character and in, in their fight style 
but one didn't have an advantage over the other. That's that's how I'm seeing it. So when the fight got called, in my head, I was like, oh, damn, Volk lost that. Even though, like, the last round, he was, you know, the man on top putting in work and everything. But it was if it wasn't a draw, then I see it as I'm taking it. And he took it. And I'm upset about it because I, I was really voting for Volk. Like, I, I really wanted him to win. It, so it wasn't a biased opinion at all. Because I didn't even want this for the win, but seeing the amount of control time that he had, and with the striking, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah, uh, I think for me, um, like I've talked about it several times on TikTok. Like, and as the fights are going on, like Jason and I always text each other what we think the score is. So I sent him like one zero Islam, two zero Islam. Uh, you know, I gave round three, even though round three actually was close, I still felt like Volk did enough. And I gave four to Islam, of course, and then the fifth to, to Volkanovski as well. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it was clear. Like, it was clear the first time I watched it that Islam won. It was clear that same night after I watched the press conference, I watched it again. The next morning, I watched the second round again. Because mm -hmm. the second round to me was one that was kind of just, it was super, super close. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Volk drop him in the beginning and then... Islam dropped Volk back and then got the um the takedown even though Volk got back up there was still like two like a little over a minute and a half of um of ground control that mm -hmm. Islam had so for me that's why he takes the second round uh, and he popped he had a uh, Volkanovski on like some stanky legs for a couple oh, seconds yeah. there in that second round and so for me it, it was clear that Islam won um but you, I, I don't necessarily. Yeah, the second round was a the second round was super close. But one thing that like is absolutely insane to me is that like because Volk was a little guy, he was stepping up. Everybody I think wanted it to go to him, but like they are just disrespecting Islam. They're acting like Volkanovski went in there and was the only fighter that was in there doing work, and that you know just miraculously you know Islam won the fight. It's like Islam was dropping your boy. Mm -hmm. Almost every round, except for the third and the fifth, like, was dropping and hurting Volk, was piecing him up on the feet. And one thing that people, that, like, we're not remembering, which, like, you know, Islam, leading up to the fight, said he wanted to knock out Volkanovski. He said that he was going to stand and bang with him. Nobody believed him because we thought he was going to do what the right. Dagestani wrestlers do, which is wrestle, regardless. But, no, like, that's why, like, for me, like, uh, like Jason and I were going back and forth about um, why Islam looked different or, you know, what was going on. I'm like, it was a completely different game plan. Like, his game plan wasn't to go inside there and wrestle. He knew he had to wrestle the fourth round because you got to get you got to get a clear round in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I don't think that I really believe, like, him, when he said that, like, he wanted to um stand and bang with Volk, that's what he did. Like, his intentions wasn't to just out grapple him because i i do think that if that was truly his intentions and the game plan that you would have seen him shooting more 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 mm -hmm. um and instead we seen him standing on the feet like you said which which he looked good he was able to stand with volkanovsky who is an extremely good point fighter yeah. right he's a good point fighter he's a good striker Tremendous and the strength yeah demonstrated like, even in the clinch situations, you know, even when mm -hmm. he was getting taken down, he would get the wizard and get back up. Right. You know? So, I agree with that. And I also think it's uh, it's a lot of politics in this. <laughs> Let's get to the politics, because this is what actually pissed me off today, right? So, the rankings updated yesterday, Tuesday the 14th, and Alexander Volkanovsky is still number one pound for pound. If you guys remember, going into this fight, it was for the number one pound-for-pound pound ranking. That's what was on the line, so, you know, to say, besides uh, the 155 title. And they left Volkanovski off at... They kept Volkanovski at the top, even though Islam won the fight. <laughs> Before I get into my rant, how do you guys feel about that? Isn't that nuts? That means that the UFC saw the fight going a different way. That's what that means. Ain't no way you lost a fight. And kept your high positioning in the in the charts. Um, no, um, sure. Did you actually move up? But there is a way because if you look at the rankings, is he still ahead of Alex? Yeah, but that's that. Uh, yeah, I guess I could see that based yeah, off of like. There's a man on the rankings that hasn't fought in three years. 
is it yeah. based, is it based off of the um amount of like work that you put in right it's the, it's the, like it's the rankings of top. however they want to put the rankings listen it's they're plain they're, and simple yeah there's a group <laughs> so. and it's down here somewhere it says how do we determine these rankings and it's done by media members and it gives a list of these yeah, media yeah. outlets yeah down here at the bottom when y'all get a chance go check it out um because these media outlets are the places that vote um on the pound for pound so it's not an internal ufc wow. like people or employee that votes i think people always think they're like if, people think dana white does everything honestly they, <laughs> but that's a whole nother topic like y'all are so stupid but like so it says right here, like, these are the companies, you know, that, that vote. So those are the people who, you know, continued and voted him in uh, to be number one. For me, it's just ab extremely disrespectful, right? It, it For me, it's just extremely disrespectful. And then, like, I'm happy that you pointed that out about Izzy being ahead of Alex because you got Leon ahead of Kamaru. And it's like, how is that? They both lo they both lost the same way. Izzy was winning the whole fight until yeah. uh, until the fifth yeah. round. Kamara was winning the whole fight. They both well, Kamara got KO'd. Um, Izzy got TKO'd. Like, so what's going on? Like, like, like we were talking about last week. The pound for pound is bullshit. It's yeah. just straight bullshit. Like, it, it it absolutely means nothing. And guess what? Like, like CJ said, we got John Jones here at number ten who hasn't fought in literally three years, yet he's still ranked number 10. And as soon as, if he wins on March 5th or March 4th, whatever the date is, oh, yeah, yeah. he's going to go right back to number one. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are we doing? He's going right back to number so, one. Skip so it. That's why I everybody. Stock in it. everybody wants to be mad and angry at it. It's like, if you go through the list, you'd be like, brother, hold this. It's just yeah. wild. So, but like, they didn't put Max back on there now. Remember last People week he wasn't there? Back. Yeah. So if you look at, look, look. So John's at 10. Jamal Hill just won the championship and he had 13. <laughs> like, nice. Make it make sense. So it's That's not nice. just like we can't stress about this, man. Anybody's just putting out a list. I'm gonna put my P for P list. Really? Yeah. I'll put whoever the hell I want on it. And it is and it's like sure. <laughs> because the science and the math is not mathing to make it make sense. So I'm not yeah. even gonna trip about it. <laughs> like it's you know not, what I mean? It's, it's not, not mathing at all. I'm so right. glad that I know that, so now I can stop paying attention to that because that shit yeah. is actually ridiculous. <laughs> now yeah. that you point that out, so yeah, yeah, thanks for that. But no yeah, I was saying this politics because yeah, there ain't no way this man lost and still up there like yeah. that. I just yeah, make it make sense. Yeah, you know, and then I had to come out with my Max Holloway video. My deep fake Max Holloway video <laughs> with the A. Now you know how it feels to, you know, lose a fight that you thought you won. Um, and, you know, it, it it is what it is. As Max likes to say, you know, uh, I thought it was, as a Max Holloway fan, you know, I thought it was poetic for him to be in his hometown and lose. Like, I, I loved it. I know y'all was going for a uh, Vogue, but nah. Nah. Oh, now, but like I said, had he went out there... What I will say is, uh, I haven't got a chance to say, is that, like, I thought Islam was going to dominate because I thought Islam was going to come in to wrestle. He decided he wanted to stand and bang. It is what it is. But I will say that Alex Volkanovsky did 100% better than what I thought he was going to do. Oh, yeah. I got to give him his respect. He is that guy. Like, he is that guy. Yeah. Um, I really think, I was listening to him on Ariel Hawani's podcast, and I really think that he is considering like that left a bitter taste in his mouth and i think he is considering like leaving 145 like he wants a rematch he's like hey we could run the rematch and and yair can go and defend the interim title i'm like only yeah. like two other interim champs have done that and ain't nobody trying to see that like just convert like you know what i mean but at the same yeah. time like if you want to go up to 155 thank you you know let let the max fans go ahead and get their champion back, baby. Sure <laughs> you know, do what you got to do. Pass it, pass the crown off. You know, it is what it is. Um, but how do you guys think he would do at one fifty five? I think, well, based off of his performance against Islam, I think he's gonna be a okay. Honestly, <laughs> after that performance, like he may be in the political eye, the pound for pound, right? But we know the truth about that. But his stock definitely did rise from that last fight. So I could see him I could see him hanging in there with with the lightweight crew, honestly. 
And which but, I think would be super entertaining to see him against like a Dustin Poirier, uh, Michael Chandler, or Conor McGregor. Like, <laughs> I would, I'm here for it 100. percent I think he'll be okay because if he can't, if he can't deal with the range, he's gonna, he's gonna grapple you, and he's gonna be the stronger person. Let me ask you something. How do you think he handles taking, getting popped by those heavy hands, right? Because Islam does not have heavy hands, right? And he was catching them. You get yeah. hit like that by Dustin Poirier. You get hit by that by Justin Gaethje, Chandler, Conor McGregor, even at that. Like, Conor, let's, I mean, we might not like, you know, he might not be fighting, but we know Conor got a nasty left. He gets caught like that. How do you think his chance, because he's been knocked down by Max Holloway, who doesn't have knockout power. He's been knocked out by Islam, who doesn't have knockout yeah. power. How do you think he handles getting well, clipped? Islam did drop uh, Oliveira. I mean, I mean, but we've seen Oliveira get dropped a few times. He you gets know. dropped in every fight. <laughs> so I don't know if I should give him the credit for that or say Oliveira got a, just a glass chin or whatever. But I I think he could hang. He's a, he's a big dude. It's not like he's really going up in weight. It's just him not competing at this weight and being familiar with the with the power behind the hands. But I really think that he could hang. Based off of that performance, I think that he could hang. He, yeah. he got hit clean with like a counter, a counter like a uh, left hand or something that Islam threw, like clean. His yeah. chin touched his shoulder. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, and he wobbled, but he didn't he didn't fall over. He didn't take a knee or nothing. He was still there. And even the commentators was like, I don't know how this man's still on his feet because <laughs> that was a as picture perfect clean shot as you as you can get. He got hit with some head kicks too. I wish Islam, mm -hmm. I wish Islam would have kept going to the to the head with the kicks. Yeah, because they were in the open stance too, which is like a more that's a more deadly kick. That's the type of kick you want to throw is that is that uh, rear leg in that stance. And he was doing it. He I think he did it like twice. And even though it was blocked, you could see like, oh damn, nigga, you you, you can't be taking those. <laughs> you better start ducking under or shooting or something. Um. Yeah, I think I think he will fare well. I think he will fare well. I mean, he just went toe to toe with the number one, you know, pound for pound or not pound for pound. He went toe to toe, and you know, shout out to him doing it for the short kings out there. I think the only thing is that I don't think his power translates going up to fifty five. You know, he never has that one KO type of power. So, and he, like everybody say, he has that dog in him. So he makes everything scrappy and he knows how to fight and he gets on the inside and makes it dirty on the inside and he's throwing a lot of punches. So I think he will play well. I think he will do a good job up there. You don't think he could knock, knock some off? I feel like he could knock some off. Knocking somebody out, though. I think he could. Run down his list and see where his knockouts are. Yeah, I know, but the people that he was fighting are very technical fighters, so they don't really get caught clean like, like he's, that. He's knocking out Dustin Poirier? No. Nope. He's not knocking out Dustin Poirier. I, I can see him, I can see him no. putting Dustin Poirier on his, on his booty. I can see that. Oh, no. Nah. I can see that. Nah. Ain't no way. Nah. I mean, like, I, like what is, what's my favorite word to say? My favorite I mean, yeah. We never know what yeah, could happen, but I'm not going to say no way. Yeah, no, but yeah. it's more unlikely than not. But he has, he knows how to make a fight dirty. He knows how to scrap his. And the thing I love, <laughs> uh, both could have went two more rounds. This fool looked like he didn't get tired at all. Oh, yeah. He was just getting started. He was yeah. Warm he didn't look up to bro. <laughs> I was, look, remember we got on TikTok Sky, and I was like, I'm tired from doing what I was doing. <laughs> and I'm just yelling and jumping at home. Yo, so shout out to him. I was like, bro, my energy is spent. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and Islam was looking a little gassed out there. I remember yeah, shooting desperation the shots. Yeah. Man, that's, that's why I'm saying I'm impressed, man, because my boy went up in weight. And I say my boy just because I'm a, I'm a Max Holloway fan as well, if y'all don't know. So anytime I'm a fan of somebody and they lose to somebody, I'm their fan as well because I want them to I want them to shine so it look, that loss looks a little less, right, yeah. from Max Holloway. You're like, well, he, he, you know, that was Volk. That's a double champ. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I got to give it to Volk, man. He actually went in there, did his shit made it 
a competition. It wasn't a, a walk in the park. Islam, I don't know if y'all saw the photos. I'm sure you did. That man looked beat the hell up. But he only got that damage in the fifth round. Like, that's one thing that, like, people don't... Um, people like damage, sure, yeah. yeah. But you know if it was to keep going, that, that man would have been in the hospital. We don't live in a fantasy world. Somebody was like, if it if it was pride rules, he would have won. If your mother was alive, he would have been your uncle. And listen, that's not what we're talking about here. Like, Yo, I hey. hate if so much. I hate if so much. Nah, but if, if I, I did, then I should have people... zapped. Hey, I was fighting with people. We don't have to talk about this, but this is just one instance. I'm on live, and there people are hating on Masvidal, and somebody was like, if Masvidal didn't need Aspen, he would have lost. But bro, he did. Yeah. It, 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 it's natural fact. Wait, we got to get off that if world. We got to get yeah. off the definitive world, the words as well. It's like, bro, this guy has no chance. Everybody has a damn chance. Both did not have a chance, and look what he did, bro. He's yeah. so improved. So, yeah. we got to chill in this community. <laughs> I mean, that, I feel you on that, but that's different versus like a time limit, right? Because some people play into that into that game is like okay I'm a I'm gonna read this person for so many rounds and I get it because you do have that time limit so you should be utilizing that time that's what it's there for but the way that this fight played out it looked like it was almost done for <laughs> it looked like if if that thing didn't go clap 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 he was out of there that's but what guess what D if if was a fifth we all be fucked up right now. <laughs> we don't live in that world, baby. I'm sorry. Facts. <laughs> facts, facts. It's like uh, you know, people be like, uh, if Nate Diaz could go six, seven rounds, man, we ain't got six, seven rounds. Like, <laughs> hey, you know what the time limit is. Y'all both come in knowing y'all got twenty five minutes, make it happen. Do um your work. Do and your one work. thing and one yeah. thing that I actually really appreciate, and I don't know if many people picked up on or where I even seen this clip from. But, like, the city kickboxing, Eugene Behrman and the coaches over there, like, the way that they plan out everything is that they break their five-minute rounds down. So you'll always see, like, not inside this Islam fight, but typically in a Volkanovski fight, the last minute and a half to two minutes, he's trying to leave the biggest impression, right? Because we know, like, the, that second half of the round – is really what tends to stick with you. So they go into more, like, you'll see him uh, try to land more damage. You'll see him try to go for the clinches, um, mm -hmm. go for any type of takedown towards the end of the round to leave that lasting impression inside a judge's mind. And the reason why I bring that up is because that's how I felt Josh Emmett fought Calvin Cater uh, when they fought. And that's why a lot of people was like, they felt like Calvin Cater won. But if you really go back and watch that fight, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, Cater mm -hmm. has his moments in the beginning part of each round, but Josh closes it out emphatically. I'm like, it just, it's a completely different vibe. And when you break the rounds down like that, like it leaves an impression inside of the judge's mind. Speaking of Josh Emmett, did he show up? Mm. Yair mm. Rodriguez put hey, on a clinic. A beautiful hey. transition, Sky. <laughs> yeah, God, you just... That's a beautiful transmission. Look at you. Yeah, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is, is is top level. I would say that he's top tier in the division strictly off of striking because if he's real good with his range, he's real good with his kicks, he's quick as shit. And I feel like it, it was just too much for Josh Emmett to like even start he couldn't even start to make reads because he was getting hit before he could even like start to think about what he was going to do. So yeah, that was a great file. I was excited to see this one and I really, I, for some reason, I don't know why I can't call it, but I thought Josh was going to win this fight. I think it was just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, he's kind of over hyped is what I was, was what I was going into this fight thinking thinking Josh Emmett, even though he's like, I'm pretty sure he's an older fighter, right? Yeah. Thinking like, oh, he's on the up and up. Like, this is his time to shine for some reason. You know, I was going with more like a spirituality type of, type <laughs> of thing with it. <laughs> you know, and, and bit me in the ass because Jair actually did his shit, and he was looking nice. He was looking sharp out there. I got to give it to him. Hey, yo, Jake. 
Where you at, my guy? Well, yeah, hey, where's Jake at? What's he saying? Yeah. That fool was talking wild. Two times in a championship fight, you hated on the Mexican fighters, and I see you not here today. Keep on. Viva Mexico, Perro. Again. <laughs> Shout out to Mexico. Viva Mexico, bro. Hey, y'all here? I loved every second of that fight. That's another one. I'm in there. My energy was going crazy. And the thing is, let's talk about Josh in his weight cut, man. Oh, man. Yeah, man. He looked like he was about to die. He looked like Skeleton. a skeleton. That didn't even seem like it was possible. It seemed like if you're looking like that, you want a gurney. You know He's what I mean? 30... Oh, go ahead, Scott. He's 37 years old. He either, you know, he had his chance at the interim title. He either needs to move up and compete at 55 yeah. or you start thinking about, because 145 ain't working. That mm. was a terrifying, like, he looked terrible. He and looked absolutely that terrible. The about that is that he did his cut, he did his weigh-in, and then right after that, he had, they had him go do an interview. And man looked like he was about to die. Yeah. Right. And then he go rehydrate, eat some stuff. Please. Please. He looked like, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. Of course, I was not going for him, but I'm like, Bro, he looked like he was on death's door. He and really he did. So but shout mean? out to Yacht here. Those kicks were beautiful. His skill level looked high. He was on the ground. And the thing, when I was, because I, I rewatched it again, I'm like, Josh Emmett is just throwing one punch. He's mm -hmm. looking for that big right hand, and that's it. And then Yacht here's moving around and just styling on him. It was so beautiful. Oh, another thing before I move on, let you talk, Damien, is that. Shout out to him giving his love to his mama. I damn near cried before that. And she gave him his <laughs> blessings before going into the... Because that's what my mom used to do to me. So I got mad love for that. Yeah, shout out to him. <laughs> shout out to him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, um, I, I was going for Yair. I was happy to see him get it done. I, I think that was Yair's best performance by far. He was out there styling. And he put that... You know, he put that stamp on it that he needed. Coming after that Ortega fight where we seen, you know, the arm pop out and it was kind of like, uh, not satisfying, not yeah. satisfying. And then Josh coming off the Cater fight where people felt like Cater won. So it just kind of felt like, why are we even doing this fight at interim? Like a lot of people wanted Arnold Allen to be there. Um, but Ooh. he came inside there and he, he put a stamp on it. He was like, hey, I'm meant to be here and this is my fight. And then got it done with the submission which nobody saw coming, his first submission in his career ever. Um, it was beautiful. One thing that, like, um, if you guys watch UFC Breakdown on uh, the UFC's YouTube, they have, like, uh, Coach Safe Saoud on there, and they also have, like, other coaches. Um, mm -hmm. But breaking down on, the yep. yeah, breaking down the fights, like, leading up to them. And so the coach, I can't remember his name right now, but he was breaking down uh, Yair versus Josh Emmett, and he was talking about how, when Yair switches to his switch stance, um, when Yair switches to southpaw, he nine times out of ten throws a liver kick. Mm -hmm. And Josh Emmett on Embedded made a comment and was like, yeah, we know when he switches stance, what he's looking for, blah, 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 blah. Man's got hit in the liver so many times, yeah. every single time. I was like, it's different when you watch it on tape and you in yeah. there because he was lighting his liver up. And the way that he was, the way that Yair was kicking to the body and then going straight down the middle and just oh, bopping him. Oh, 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 sniper. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. It, it, was, it was literally art. It was and literally can, art. Like, as Josh Emmett coaches and then we're talking about, you can expect that and train for that. But the speed... And accuracy, you can't, you would have to have another Yair Rodriguez training with you the whole time. Otherwise, when you're in there and it's live, you got so much shit going in your head. You can't think that fast. You can't, your body just simply can't respond that fast because Yair was looking quick as shit. That right. man, that's the flash. That's the Ryan Garcia right now of the, of the featherweight division. You feel me? And that's why, you know, like when I was watching him versus Max live, I was so anxious because to watch that live and see how fast he's moving, I was like, oh my God, he's going to catch my guy with something. He's going to catch my guy with something that none of us is going to see. Yeah. Um, speaking of getting caught with something, we got Jack Della Madalena who got it done against rude boy Randy Brown. Randy looked good in the beginning. 
like in the it. beginning, <laughs> CJ don't want to talk about this. He said nah, it's nah, Black I, History Month. No, I just, oh yeah, I was about to say, hey, nah, you know what month it is? You know what month it is? Yeah, <laughs> we go. Yeah, we're not gonna stay there too long because uh, Randy ended up face down, ass up. I mean, <laughs> hey, but you know the thing is, as soon as he hit the cage, I'm like, he's about to go out. Yep. As soon as he got to the cage, I'm like, yep. he's about to, he's about to move. Right, we we'll, we'll, we'll gave it away. Because I don't want to, uh, this is not no race thing, but I've been seeing things. A lot of times when the black fighters get up on the cages, they can't move swiftly how they normally want to move, and their chin is just straight up in the air. Mm-hmm. So as soon as he was getting his kicks in, he was moving, he's looking swift. I don't even think JDM threw a punch at that time. So uh, a rude boy started moving, got to the cage, slowed his whole movement down. His chin was in the air. I was like, he's, he's about to lose this, bro, because he ain't have nowhere to go. Right. Was he, got caught? Him too? he got caught. He got hit right on the button. What was that? I said, wasn't he taunting him too? Wasn't he like, I, f- I felt like I was watching him like do something like egging him on and stuff and then got, and then got slept. He got popped. And then his legs went out and he was looking crazy. He got choked <laughs> out. Shout you out know, to but, <laughs> but shout out to Jack. You know, that was his fourth fight in the UFC. Fourth win in a row. Uh, fir- fourth, first round finish. Um, So, you know, he's on to, to good things. I'm excited to see, you know, what's going to happen there. Parker Porter versus Justin Taffa. That was over before it started. Minute six, right. Justin did not come there to play. He came to nah, get his yeah. check what and go home. This, this man this man going in there sleepy. He, he reminds me of uh, Tui Vasa. I don't know yeah, they're from the same spot. They yeah. got the same body composition. They got the same fight style or what it is. But he like a, a clone of that man to me for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then finishing at the top of the card or at the bottom of the card, you had Jimmy Crute versus Alonzo Menefield. As soon as they took that point away uh, for the cage grab, I was like, it's a it's a draw. Yep. It's a draw. I knew it was a draw because Alonzo, Alonzo was doing his thing, but Alonzo was, was. gassing out. He was. Both them boys was tired. Oh, my God. Them boys was tired. Which I can imagine that's light heavyweight. And there's another one who's coming out here tripping. <laughs> Derek Lewis lost in February. Ah, damn. Uh, hey, we should we should uh we should have been keeping tally of like all the black people yeah, in February. Been that been damn, that's I'm gonna go back and look. I'm gonna go back at the previous cards and look. Yeah. Yeah, but he was look that that busted. I'm not a betting guy, but that busted a lot of people's parlays up too because they they was the draw. Mm-hmm. Facts. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I mean, and you know, looking into next week, your boys on here, your teammates on here. Oh yeah. 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 Um, Jessica Andrade stepping in for Taya Santos against Aaron Blanchfield. Uh, This is a short turnaround for Jessica, especially because she just fought on the Brazil card last January or January. So now she's back against Aaron Blanchfield, who took out Molly McCann in that first round and dust her shoulders off. Super grappler. You know, everybody's going after the queen, Valentina Shevchenko. Um, this card is thin. If you watch the Contender Series, then you'll know some of these faces. Yeah. Um, but if you don't, then you don't know a lot of these people. Um, oh, I yeah. can. I just wanted to say, Jordan Wright, this is his light heavyweight debut. Oh, they, yeah, they oh, he's moving up. Away. Yep, he was that at Mayweather. Yeah. yeah, in the last fight, he I remember talking to him. He was saying that he was doing the, like a low carb diet, felt great, you know, looking as lean as he's ever been, yada yada yada. But in my mind, I was like, that's not good because I'm on that low carb diet, and I know like the energy consumption that it takes to be on that diet is is completely different so and he he ended up gassing out like in the second round like couldn't even hold his hands up so mm-hmm. this this might be a good one but he is going up against uh you Zach. know yeah he was on tough yes. he was on so tough with does. Usman's brother so he's dropping yeah. down a weight class too cuz he was fighting that oh. heavyweight oh okay. um, against... now that made it more interesting yeah, so now we got both boys uh, dropping down. So well, he's going up. Jordan Wright going up. He's okay. dropping down. Yeah, right. yeah, 
That'll be interesting. Yeah, they meeting at the middle. Because Zach got was. knocked out by the jab. Kamara Usman's brother hit him with that jab and was like, eh. Yeah. Well, Who could be banging, though? He can bang. He do. He can bang. Yeah. He do. Yeah, That'd so that'll be good to see. Jamal Progs, I did not say his name right, and I apologize. But he's from Contender Series. Um, If it hasn't already come out, then it should be coming out in the next couple of days, probably by the time this is out. Um, You guys can te- check out his Contender Series next level. Mm. Uh, there's also a next level for Nazim that's already out that I dropped this morning. Um, and I, that's why I like contender series. Cause we do these parts like after contender series, like certain fighters, they'll follow them afterwards. And you'll see like, after they get the contracts, them going back home, celebrating, preparing for their next fight. And then after they fight their first, you know, their UFC debut, then another, um, we'll do a part two afterwards that shows, you know, whether they won or they lost. Speaking of that, AJ Fletcher also has an episode. Part one and part two is already out. Um, so yeah, Contender Series mm-hmm. is where it's at. If you guys aren't watching it, definitely check it out. Um, yeah, next season I'm gonna be on you to make sure that you catch right, it. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna say yeah. what, when, when, next season. when does that come around? Around summertime, right? Yeah, like in December, like around usually August, September. Yeah. So I'm. I'm you know what I'm gonna have to do? Like. All right, this next upcoming season, like, I'm going to have to make sure that we all go. Like, it'd yeah. be cool if, like, all of us can go on the same night. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's, do that. that's going to have to happen. Yeah. And that's like a reality show. No, that's just straight fighting. Like, you fight if you win, and no, it's fight. you... Yeah, it's just straight fights. If you win, then you get to go to... Uh, you get a contract. It's Not fight. necessarily, it's like... Fight. Like, the whole thing about it is that, like, it has to be... Dana wants to see you it's trying at all levels. Like, you can't go inside there and point fight for a decision. Mm-mm. He's going to be like, course. yeah, cool, you won, but I, I, like, I'm not about to get a contract off of you. Um, like, for a contract, you- where, do, where do they come from? Other organizations? Uh, like local Over organizations, the like the smaller yeah, ones. The yeah, yeah. But see, that's why even... Um, so PFL's current 145 champion, Brandon... You know his last name. I, I can't remember his last name. It's like long and something. But PFL's current champion was on Contender Lovely. Series. Lovely. Yeah, he won on Contender Series, but he didn't get a contract. Um, because it was just kind of like a because at the at towards the end, I believe I believe he's the guy at the end of the third round. He took his foot off the gas pedal. He started looking up at the clock. And he was kind of just like ah, and like towards the end, it was still like two seconds left, and they hugged it out. Dana was like, "Fuck no, no, mm-hmm. absolutely not." But you know, mm-hmm. he went on. And now he's with PFL. Boom. He just won a million dollars. You know what I mean? So like Dana always says, like on there, he's like, the people that he doesn't sign, he's like, this is the best uh free marketing and like free like for other promotions. Mm-hmm. He's like, all these other promotions, as soon as these dudes don't get signed, or even if they lose, because some of them lose and they still make it, you know, to the UFC. But like if they don't, he's like, Y'all should be hitting these people up. Y'all should be going crazy. Danny Sabatello, um, that just fought Rafion Stotts and Bellator. He's from Contender Series. He was the only person to get a uh, 30-26 across Ooh, the board. Like, But yeah. all he does is sit there and hug his opponents with no Ooh. damage. And Dana right, didn't want yeah. that. But yet and still, he's over there at Bellator doing his thing. So, yeah, you, you come across a lot of good people. Okay. That's interesting. Um, yeah, but you got to start watching because it'd be bangers. I'm sure so, there are. Jamal Hill, the champion, coming from the Contender Series. Say that one more time. I said, shout out Jamal Hill coming from the Contender Series. Oh, yeah. Jamal yeah, Hill, the, the first champion. Yep. Yep. Alex Perez was the first uh, Contender Series alumni to challenge for the title. Talia Santos was the second. And then, hey, third time's a charm. Jamal Hill got it done. It's Black History Month. <laughs> I had to say that for you. Yeah. So, if you guys haven't already, make sure that you click the link, whether you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on TikTok, Instagram, wherever it is, make sure that you click the link and submit your MMA hot takes. The hotter, the better. Any type of questions, opinions that you guys have, it's all anonymous. I know how y'all like to get off when it's anonymous. Y'all like to talk reckless. Surprisingly, there hasn't been anything crazy, but... Let's go ahead and ask the first question um, that we got in. So the question is, if the major MMA companies had a tournament like a Grand Prix, like how Pride used to be, 
with one Bellator UFC, who do you think would come out on top? So basically, which organizations, fighters, do you think would come out on top if there if it was a Grand Prix? UFC. Go ahead, Danny. You can start. It. Uh, UFC. I'm gonna say UFC first of all because I'm biased. I watch mostly <laughs> UFC. I want. I watch. I watch Bellator. I've been to a Bellator event or two. You know, uh, I seen uh, McGee fight live. Uh, but I don't know. There's something about the UFC that makes it seem like it's just a higher level, which can't. It can't always be necessarily true, right? Depending on the weight divisions that we're talking about. But I feel like overall, the UFC has such a solid foundation for overall grapplers or strikers that they would be I feel like they would be at an advantage. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go UFC. What about you, I CJ? also agree. I also agree, but do not sleep on one at all. Because UFC is very top heavy and their their best of their best is very, very good. Mm-hmm. And one best of their best is very, very good. But we're talking about Bellator, though, right? No, I'm talking about one uh, No, one we're talking about all of them. Yeah, get them. Um, we're talking about, oh, we're talking we're talking about, about one, oh, if they all, PFA. like, say, like, if they put their all their, like, you know, top five contenders up from each. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, so one, you, PFL, Bellator. One has DJ. Yeah. So yeah, DJ that, versus yeah, that's Moreno. That's a banger. You know what I mean? Uh, if you look at the females, you know, I'm heavy in the female fights. The, the female fights that in, in one are. Oh, yeah. Up in Their yep. striking is amazing. Uh, so a lot of the guys over there want to see the, the, the light heavyweight champion over there. He's a dog, too. So, you know, it's a lot of top heavy, but it's still a young organization. But I, I love one. So, you know, it'll be UFC at the top. Of course, they have all the talent and stuff. But one FC is next to me. And then everybody else falls down. Yeah. How do you feel, Scott? Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty much gonna echo the same thing you guys said. I, I feel like one would be really close. Um but mm-hmm. I think the UFC's top five w- would edge it out. I, I would love to see it. Actually, I would really love because I know the UFC's not gonna do it because it doesn't make sense for them business wise to do it, because a lot of newer fans and a lot of people like the actual casuals, not just people insulting, but like just people who casually watch the sport, like you'll hear them say, Oh, do you play UFC or do you want like, like they have turned the, the, the name of the promotion UFC into the sport of mixed martial arts. Like everything. they're synonymous with mixed martial arts that people, the casual people don't even know that it's not called UFC. Right, but yeah. so a lot of these people don't even know that there's other organizations. Oh yeah. Like, like they, they have no idea about Bellator. They have no idea about these other places. So it doesn't make sense for the UFC to help expose their competition. Right. Yeah. But if PFL one and Bellator were to get together, cause Bellator is cool with pros- cross promotion. You know, they did it with Ryzen yeah. uh, for the new year's Eve card, which was a banger. Um, but if they were to, all three of them were to get together and th- put on like a Grand Prix, I feel like that would that would definitely put some pressure on the UFC's neck because us fans would start looking like, yo, like if they if they can do it, like why yeah. can't we do it? We we just seen Bellator run through everybody over there at Ryzen. You know what I mean? Like imagine seeing PFL and Bellator and one's champions going at it. Oh, we instantly the oh. fans are gonna want to see what's up with the UFC. Like y'all say y'all the best, like. But y'all not here. Yep. I just think that would be fire. I yeah. think they should do it because it will really they cause should. a lot of rus- ruckus. Then you could really hang up the who's the best fighter in the world, right? That, that solves it all. This is really the best fighter in the world. It's like Street Fighter, the video game, right? Yeah. You know, all these fighters from all, all, all different parts of the world competing against each other for the best fighter in the world. Because that's what it is. It's everybody in the world. It's not... Oh, I I would fight you, but I'm locked in a contract with this organization over here. Yada yada yada. That would really showcase the true, especially in the heavyweight division, the baddest man or woman. Imagine some heavyweight women. That <laughs> I'll be I'll sign up for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They ain't even talking about that. I don't understand why. 
But yeah, I, don't mean, I don't know if you guys know when the last time that happened with UFC. You know when the last time that happened, Scott? So Which one? It happened when when they had a little cross promotion. It wasn't huge, but Dana took Chuck over to Pride, right? Mm-hmm. So Chuck was the UFC champ at that time, and he went over to Pride, and he fought Rampage, who was in Pride. And um, Rampage dog-walked Chuck. He got him up out of there, had him like throwing in the towel to end the fight. So I don't think they want that kind of stuff. Yeah, I posted it on my TikTok. I'll tag you in it. But um, there was a young Dana White in there. He was like, yeah, we were supposed to get him ready. We had him get him ready in the bag. So that was the last time I think they did a a cross-promotion thing. They took mm. one of their fighters to go fight somewhere else. But it wasn't a whole organization that went over there and went at it together. It was just that one fighter. And that was Chuck yeah. Liddell. Mm-hmm. Well, Conor went and fought, fought Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, but, I mean, that's boxing. It's not MMA. It's not not really the same, but the UFC was behind him. You see Dana White walking him out, doing the little, you know, commentary and everything, so... Yeah, that money was talking. That's why. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, Scott, before you go back to the question, I got a question in a similar vein. So, say you're going to start a new organization and it's going to be successful, right? It's not going to be like some trash organization. What three fighters would you take from the UFC to be kind of the face of your organization? You too, Damien. I'll give you about it. Mm. Off top, so, you... what three fighters am I taking to be the face of my organization? Don't say him right now because oh. he's not fighting, but you can say him if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Is he excluded? Yeah, yeah. He's okay, so no Conor McGregor. <laughs> we, we have to think a little bit harder. <laughs> All right. yeah, hey, I'm like, because you know, you gotta go, like love him or hate him, whatever it is. That yeah, man, I do. <laughs> that man brings eyeballs to the sport. Yeah, uh, yes, okay. Yes, 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 Off yes. top, before like at, right after Kurt, uh, right after Connor, I'm taking Izzy. Mm, yeah, I'm taking um, face of my organization. I'm taking Izzy. I, I will never not take Max. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. Like I will never not take Max. Like but that's just pushes, my guy. He pushes. Mm-hmm. He he really does. He really does push the new to like, and he's a good guy. Like he's not over there trying to be like a jackass. Um, and I'm taking mm-hmm. O'Malley. O'Malley. Yep, that's a good choice. Yeah, yep. yep. that's, that's what exactly I'm running who with. I was thinking. Exactly that's what I'm running with. Thinking. That's a so good I'll choice. probably change the one slight one. I you know I love Max too, but yeah. I would probably switch Max with Brandon Moreno. I was oh I was thinking about Brandon that that was Just my a little a little switch but I love it I love all of that I love all of that I love all of that yep yeah. yep yep how you feeling about Daniel? you mm. well I was gonna pick Connor but since he off the table I'm gonna take both Valentina Shevchenko yes, I'm gonna take too. Amanda Nunez that's the goat right there oh I already got I already got the top women right. Yep. <laughs> now who am I? Who else I'm gonna pick? Mm. I'm gonna take Izzy. Izzy, yeah. I like that. Shout out, Danny. Is a superstar. Hell yeah. and, and I'm not gonna lie. When I was, it was tough. It was it was kind of between Brandon, Max, and Amanda for me. Like, mm-hmm. but I, but I but I had to I had to go since you said three. Like I had I couldn't leave Izzy out. He just yeah. he's Izzy. Yeah. Like. And the thing with Izzy, he does a lot of the things that are on the outside. He has a YouTube. Yes. He's always on Instagram. He's mm-hmm. always that yes. thing. He promotes himself, so he's going to promote the org by himself, you know? So that's exactly. what I'm going. He's going to bring them. People, he's divisive. He's divisive. People love him, and people hate him as well for some odd reason. I don't know why, but you know how that goes. Because they're fragile. They're fragile people. that They, like, can't comprehend another man painting their fingernails and wearing pearls. What does that have to do with you? You can't. not like Izzy. Izzy's so... That's why they don't like him. And just cool and just like... But you know what, Scott? He represents everything that should be like an athlete, in my opinion. Like They was not liking him before he even was doing that, too. You want to know what it is? 
people, they, they want you to be humble. Like, they want you to, like, that's what they want to do. They want to put you in a box. Like, when Kamara Usman was on, you know, his, um, defending his championship, doing his thing, and then he comes out with no shirt on. He's living his best life. This man's in the best shape of his life. He's in the prime of his life, making money, and y'all want him to put on a shirt. Y'all want him to act the way y'all want him to act. Why? Because it makes you feel bad about you. Yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with him. It's it ain't got nothing to do hey, with but, him. Yeah. Hey, but Scott. It's okay when Connor do it though, huh? <laughs> it's okay when he do it though, huh? They hate when I do it, but it's okay when you do it. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Facts. You feel me? And to 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 double up on that on our days on our days podcast that had Jamal Hill on there, that's exactly what Jamal was talking about. Before he became champion, he was talking about, you know, hey, when they do it, it's cool. When I do it, it's a problem. It's he a problem. he echoes that exact same thing, and and I really started thinking about it. And I was like, you know, it's true. And that was another thing that Jamal was talking about. Like, I don't think people really realize like how smart Jamal Hill is. Like, mm-hmm. kind of just like didn't really see him coming. But even on there, he was like, the reason why he was campaigning so hard to be inside the video game, he was like, is that that's more marketing. He's like, because yep. then people get to play with you. You know, people get to connect with you in a different way. You get to get more brands and sponsorships because now you're inside of the game, and um. So when y'all see these players and they're like, hey, put me in the game, you know, like it's bigger than just like, oh, I want to play with my boss, you know? <laughs> Jamal oh, yeah. sucks in that game, by the way. <laughs> they made him ridiculously slow. It's Did it's they? absurd. Yeah. That's crazy. Nobody uses that fool. So, yeah, they're doing dirty with that. I don't know why they do that. Update the them. ratings. They need to, <laughs> yeah. They need to update the rankings uh, for him. Okay. And so, the opposite of CJ's question who would you off top cut from Damn. your promotion? Three people that you would just off top, like, like, like can't do it. Huh? Like big names in the rankings? Just whatever fighter that like you wouldn't want to be a part of your organization. Mm. For hey, whatever I'll, reason. Kobe's off of mine. Kobe, you know Kobe's off of mine, mine. Sean Strickler. You out of here. Yeah, yeah. Gone, yeah, yeah but, uh, we just ain't, ain't gonna be able to mesh together, my guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just can't, we're not gonna be able to flow, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, who else? Who be, who's born? Damn. Don't don't do it to my boy. Oh. <laughs> don't do my remember the name. Don't do Bilal. Oh, Bilal. I like Bilal. I like Bilal. Okay. I like okay, I, I like Bilal, Bilal too. Jace like hates Bilal. Bilal. I like Jace, Bilal. Jace be hating on I was about to say Jace be hating on Bilal. Um damn, who else? Who else? Who else we don't like? Mm. Like B. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to run through the division. One thirty five. Yeah, we, yeah, we got off top. Scott. Oh, off top, number one was Kobe. Number two was uh Sean Strickland. Like both of them have to go. And <laughs> really? like, I like Kobe. I feel like I like him for the entertainment. Cause I, cause you, you gonna tune into his fights to, cause you want to see him get beat the fuck up. And that's true. <laughs> And so that's true. That. It's an, it's, he's an entertainer to me. He's not a real fighter like esque <laughs> person. He's more of an entertainer in the aspect that I want to see him get beat up. Oh, and um, no, I do agree with you. Like he is an entertainer and all of that, and he does bring eyeballs because he's so controversial. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like if it's my organization, I, his type of style of promotion isn't something like I want to be a part of. Like part I, I'm not into yeah, people. Yeah. You just yeah. talking crazy and reckless and then stand inside the ring, kiss another man on the cheek, talking about, oh, it's just business. <laughs> you know I love you. What? Man, stop. Stop. Mm-hmm. Like, you could just be cool. Like, you ain't got to act like that. And he was talking reckless about Usman's dad. Like, it just wasn't, I'm not I'm not into that at all. And yeah, then Sean Strickland, much, Sean Strickland just, I, I don't have nothing to say about him. And the last person, y'all always hear me talk crap about him on this podcast, Mark Madsen, he ain't even in the rankings somewhere. <laughs> but he's just a lay and pray on top of you. Do yeah. no damage. Don't throw a punch. Not 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 going for a submission. I have no desire for that. Cause I can't think of anybody else that like I dislike that much that like Genuine I would have like, yeah. yeah. You know who yeah. who else I would bring into my or- organization is Raul Rosa. Yes. Yeah. You only gave us three though. You know, I'll try I know, to- but I just yeah, off the top of my mind because the eyes want to see what's gonna be going on with the young gun. That's Facts. that. No matter what he has going on, he, Facts. he won't see what he has going on with him. 
facts. Yeah. Okay. Which you got any other questions? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Last go ahead. one. Last one. We will run this last one. Which weight class would you um like if you could only pick one weight class to build around, right? Which weight class would you pick? Go ahead, Daniel. I like in your organization. In your organization. <laughs> I like uh welterweight. Because I feel like it's a perfect medium for people that are heavy looking to cut weight or people who are smaller but can throw on muscle mass but not have to worry about cutting weight as well. So you could have a mix of people that are like 6'1", 6'2". You could also have people that are like 5'10", who could all hang at that same weight class versus having somebody that's 6'1", at like featherweight with the range and the speed versus a smaller guy who's all muscle trying to get up in that weight class you know what i mean i feel like i feel like i i feel like walter weight is a is a perfect weight and you hear a lot of fighters talking about oh i wish there was a 165 or i wish there was a 160 division but i feel like it's unnecessary 170 is there that's like the middle ground you want to be heavy you want to be light 170 is right there for you I think for myself, if I were to start one, I probably would start one with at 155. Across, even just not UFC, across organization, the, the, the athletes at 155 are all amazing. And let's go back to UFC. 155 has synonymously been amazing fighters. And they start going up to 170 when they, they're on their downfall. They're, they're at their prime always at 155, and they can also do it all. You either get a knocked out, they got grapplers, they have people who do jiu-jitsu, their hand, hand speed is still there, they're fast, they're strong. So I would go with 155 for me personally. Yeah. You know, actually, I really like all all of your answers. I think Damien picked 170 because that's like his weight class, but... Because <laughs> Damien going to fight the fighters. He's going to be fighting the fighters. He's going to beat your ass. <laughs> right but but um when i first asked the question like i was thinking just strictly off of like the ufc roster but then when you started speaking cj about like just across all mixed martial arts like 155 is fire but yeah i guess for me it's like a two-part answer it's like if i had to pick which uh like a division from the ufc that i would run with i'm running with bantamweight because so I just fun. love Bantamweight right now. I just love yeah, Bantamweight. So but fun. like like you said, like 155, as far as um, just talent, yeah, absolutely. And if it was possible, now this is three answers, so I'm way off. <laughs> I'm off my <laughs> own question. But like, I think a happy medium, kind of like what Damien said, is 165. All the fighters do want 165. Um, and I think 165, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if I had to pick like from the UFC strictly, just based off their roster, yeah, I'm rocking with 135 because people is going to sleep. They fast. They quick. Yeah. So one of the most technical uh, weight classes there is where you can see technique and athleticism at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. See, look, angry man Jace is not here. You can have multiple answers, Jace. <laughs> yeah, when, when Jace is in here, we can have multiple answers. Damn. <laughs> I uh, like that you're not here today because you know we were coming for that ass, Jay. Oh, he knew. He knew. I'm telling you. He's been calling me. We haven't really talked since the fight because the same night he called, and he's like, he was at the bar, and he's like, I just watched this with over 300 people, and everybody thought Volkanovski won, and him and I were going at it. We were going at it it and he's like we need to save this for the pot so like we haven't talked for the last couple of days and like then he couldn't hop on I'm like oh dang but um but yeah you know we're here another week we'll definitely be back next week we'll still pick up on some stuff make sure you guys drop your MMA hot takes drop your questions um and we will be back with more fire we're only getting better uh yeah. it is what it is Peace. hold on before we leave before we yeah. leave before we leave Hey, yo, Sky, I wanted to thank you last week, but thank you for putting this on. Um, before I used to just talk to my girl, and I still love talking to my girl about the fights, and I want to say thank you for hosting this for us and letting us come together and talk about it, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And yeah, it's always a good time. It's always fun. Yeah. 
And when y'all watching this, y'all, man, this ain't this is a fun podcast, bro. You ain't gonna get all the stats and all that shit. We just trying to have yeah. fun. All right, yeah. do y'all so girl. I just wanted right. to give you yeah. some love before we get off. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's cool to like discuss this around other people who are as invested into this as you are. Yeah. So yeah, hundred percent I get that. Thank you. I- I'm just Thank happy you. that y'all show up every week, you know? Yeah. Like, hey man, you never know. One day. But until then, yeah. we'll be back. Peace.